Hello YouTube, I hope you're having a great day. Today we're gonna to discuss the Excel 2016 exam, and specifically we're gonna look at the domain called Manage Data Cells and Ranges, which takes up about 15 to 20% of the overall exam. I'm gonna go ahead and throw a graphic up so you can see the domain. Today's video is gonna cover the subdomain called Format Cells and Ranges. Let's go ahead and jump into Excel. The first thing it tells us in this domain that we need to be able to do is to merge cells. There are a few ways to merge cells. Let's go ahead and look at one of them. So if I click A9 to G9, I'm on the Home tab, I'm in the Alignment group. I'm going to go ahead and click Merge and Center. That's the first way to merge. Notice that this became one cell and it placed the data right in the middle. Let's go ahead and undo that. I'm going to go ahead and select A9 to G11 this time. If I click Merge and Center this time, it's going to give me an error message. It's just going to tell me it's going to keep the first value here. I'm going to click OK. And notice it went ahead and it made it one cell. It kept the date and it erased everything else. I'm going to hit Control Z to undo. With that same range selected, this time I'm going to click the Merge and Center drop down and I'm going to select Merge Across. Now this is different from Merge and Center. This time, notice what it did. It merged each line across. So now I have three different cells and those cells span the range that I selected. I'm going to type Control Z just to undo what I did. I'm going to click the drop down here again. This time I'm going to select Merge Cells. Again, I'm going to get that error message. And this time it merged it. It kept my first cell here and it just put it on the bottom right hand corner of my screen. Now with that selected, I still have one other option. And this time it's unmerged cells. If I click this, notice my data still has disappeared from A10 and A11, but now each one of those is treated as a separate cell again. This domain tells us that we need to modify the cell alignment and indentation for a cell. I'm going to go ahead and just open this up just a little bit so we can see the cell just a little bit more clearly. And we've played around a little bit with the alignment. You can do that from this section here. You have the top, middle, bottom alignment, and then you have the left, center, and right alignment. And you can do a combination of those two. You also have your increase and decrease indentation here. Notice that if I click here, that now it's pushing it from the left hand side. I'll go ahead and undo that. What we want to look at here is this in this alignment group, I'm going to hit the alignment dialog box to pop this out because I want you to see some things. You have the horizontal and vertical alignments and you can play around with that. You can do a lot of that here, but this will be more specific. What I want you to see here is that I can manually set that. I'm showing you this because if you're clicking it around up here, you might not be sure how many times you've clicked it and then you're going to get lost. And I don't want you to have to reset a project if this is a question that you see. I'm going to hit cancel here. The subdomain tells us that we need to be familiar with the format painter. This is such a cool feature in Excel. There's not a whole lot of formatting going on in A11. But if I put my cursor here and I'm on the home tab, I'm in the clipboard group. If I click format painter, it kind of gives me the copy marquee that I've seen when I've copied information. But notice what happens when I click A10 that went ahead and copied that formatting. If I had this cell merged here with that selected and click Format Painter, notice it went ahead and did that again. What it does, the Format Painter, is it copies the formatting and it applies it to another cell. If you have a lot of different cells that you need to affect at the same time, what you could do is double click the Format Painter and now when I click notice that it keeps copying the format when you need to exit that you can hit the escape key or you can click format painter and it will no longer copy the formatting you could be asked to wrap your text on the certification exam notice that i have quite a few different cells here where the information just doesn't fit you could be asked to have the text display to where it drops to another line on the certification test. If I look here, I'm just gonna go ahead and highlight B, but I could do individual cells should I choose. I'm on the Home tab, I'm in the Alignment group, and this time I'm gonna hit Wrap Text. And notice what happens. We went ahead and dropped the cells down that had text that displayed further than the cell width. 
hamburger drop down, french fries drop down, chicken sandwich drop down. All the cells that were the text didn't fit was pushed down to the next line. This subdomain also tells us that we need to be able to apply number formats. I'm going to go ahead and put my cursor here in C13. The formatting of the cell is general, but if I click the drop down here, I could change this to number or currency. I'll go ahead and click currency just so you can see that. Notice I went ahead and put the dollar sign and it carried out the number to two decimal places. I can also do some of the formatting here if you needed to do euro or Chinese, you could do that. We have the percentage and comma. You also have the ability to change the decimal places that are shown. So for example, if I click this decrease, notice that that disappears. You have more number formattings than just what's here. I'm gonna go ahead and click this number dialog box so you can see that. This is another place where you can change the decimal places so we can put it back up to two or maybe you wanna see four, it's up to you. But you have a lot of categories here where you can change that. Let's go ahead and look at this date here. Currently we have date and that's great, but I, I want you to see here in this dialog box, this date here in the type, I have a lot of different settings that I could do. For example, if maybe I don't want the year displayed, if I select this and click OK, notice it only does 2-2. In addition to applying number formats, you're also going to be asked to apply cell formats. So if I select this cell here, A13, I'm on the home tab, I'm in the font group. You could be asked to make some changes in this group, such as changing the font. Maybe we want Times New Roman. So I can do that. Maybe instead of it being 11, I want 18. I can click enter there. I could do bold, italics. I could do underline here. You could be asked to change the color. Maybe you want blue and we'll make it white text. Those are all different cell formats you could be asked to apply. But you can also pop out this font dialog box and you get just a few more options here, such as the strike through superscript and subscript. Go ahead and click cancel. And then the last thing it tells us that we need to be able to do is to apply cell styles. Now this one's pretty easy. We're on the home tab. I still have A13 selected and I'm in the styles group this time. Here are my styles. There's a lot to choose from. You could be asked to do a specific theme and maybe it's a heading. You have the number format here. There's a lot of small options here. This section shouldn't be too difficult for you to browse through, but you'll want to know where it's at. Thank you for watching this video. My hope always as I create new content is that my viewers feel better able to carry out tasks in Microsoft. If you like the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Let me know that you liked it. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. That way you get a notification when I release my next video. Do you have a suggestion on a video that I should make? Leave a comment below. Let me know what you want me to create. That way I can better help you.